Hey everybody, so there is a lot of news over in China and that is what I'm going to talk about in this video here. So let's just start by uh, reading this headline. It comes from Bloomberg. So it says Foxconn offers staff $1,400 to leave after iPhone city violence. So if you guys haven't been up to date with the news over in China, um, essentially last week we saw workers clash with police over at Foxconn due to delayed bonus payments and uh, working conditions related to COVID. And um, that last Thursday, you know, we saw, we started seeing an uh, exodus. So Foxconn essentially said that they had this input error in their computer system, you know, believe it or not. And um, they were essentially giving new hires contracts for existing workers and that new recruits will be paid what they what was promised to them so foxconn basically offered up these disgruntled protesting employees about ten thousand yuan or one thousand four hundred dollars um to leave so this was essentially just hey you know what if you want to leave you can take this severance pay and if not then you know just continue working so now they have to replace the workers who decided to take that severance pay so this is worrisome because Apple had recently announced that they would be seeing some delays. So let me go ahead and pull that Apple report out. So this comes straight from um, Apple's newsroom. And uh, take a look at the date right here. This is November 6, 2022. So uh, let's just go ahead and uh, read it. So it says, update on supply of iPhone 14 Pro and iPhone 14 Pro Max. So um, it says right here, COVID-19 restrictions have temporarily impacted um, the primary iPhone 14 Pro and iPhone 14 Pro Max assembly facility located in Shenzhen, um, China. So the facility is currently operating at significantly reduced capacity. So that's not a good thing, significantly reduced capacity. So as we have done throughout the COVID-19 pandemic, we are prioritizing the health and safety of the workers in our supply chain. So now here it says, uh, we continue to see strong demand for iPhone 14 Pro and iPhone 14 Pro Max models. So that's a good thing. However, we now expect lower iPhone 14 Pro and iPhone 14 Pro Max shipments than we previously anticipated. And customers will experience longer wait times to receive their new products. That is not a good thing. So keep in mind, this is November 6th. Now, uh, let's take a look at the date of this article. This is uh, Thursday, November 24th. So you guys, they were already saying, hey, you know what, we're gonna see delays. But then this happened. So yeah, I mean, it's probably going to be worse than what Apple was expecting at the time of this press release. Keep in mind, we are about one month away from Christmas. So this situation gets a little bit worse. So if Apple basically can't deliver these iPhones by Christmas, then, you know, a lot of people, they may just cancel that order, you know. So this is definitely a problem for Apple. Now, there is another piece coming out of uh, China. So let's just talk about this real quick. It says, uh, Shenzhen protests of months-long COVID lockdowns erupt after a deadly fire. So it says residents say COVID-19 restrictions contributed to delay in putting out fire that killed 10 people. So uh, let's just talk about this a little bit. So essentially, you know, when the firefighters had to arrive on the scene, they had to go through all of these COVID-19 barricades. And on top of that, there were these narrow roads with parked electric vehicles that had pretty much run out of power because they haven't been going anywhere for a while due to the lockdowns. So, you know, right now, Chinese citizens, they are definitely enraged about the lockdown. Now, they have been enraged for a while, but this situation really just makes it much worse. Now, uh, let's just talk about Apple again. So, let me just remind you why Apple is so important to the stock market. So, if we're looking at the Qs, which follows the NASDAQ, if we're looking at the weighting here, this is 12.51%. So Apple accounts for 12.51%, you guys. That's a lot. Let's look at um, SPY, which follows the S&P 500. So Apple accounts for 7%. So 
So that's a lot. So now I'm going to finish this off by just talking about the Apple technicals right now. So um, two big things I want to point out right away. So these bold red lines right here, you know, this is a resistance trend line. This is a longer term support trend line. So um, right now I am using the 10 year one day time frame. So let's just go back. Look at this trend line right here. It's going way, way back. So if we're looking right here, this last point of touch, this was um, basically on the 19th in, uh, in um, June. So this was the 19th of June. So you guys can see from this point, we've basically been bouncing here, bouncing there. Uh, we shortly cut underneath during that um, 2020 crash, but we got right back up. And then look at this most recent test right here. And we saw some funny price action right around here where price action was just chopping around. So it was deciding, hey, you know what? Are we going to make a solid break to the downside or are we going to uh, chop around for a little bit? And as you guys can see, we decided to chop around for a little bit. Now, if we're looking at this resistance trend line, you can see it made this top right here. Now, this was pretty crazy. I mean, we were seeing a lot of interest rate hikes around this time. Now, this was, uh, let's look at the date here. This was uh, very, very recent. So this was in August of 2022. So we had all these interest rate hikes and we were essentially looking at Apple prices that were very close to the peak right up here. So to me, it's crazy that we even got this high. This was a massive, massive um, squeeze. So um, we see this top right here and uh, we see a rejection right there, another rejection right there. And here's where we're at. So this pattern right here, this is called a pennant. So right now we're stuck inside the pennant and you know, we could either break to the upside or we could break to the downside. But you know, I have a feeling that it's more likely that we could see a break to the downside. Now let's just talk about some other things right here. So on this chart, you know, I have this, um, Resistance trend line. So this resistance trend line is right around 150. So why is this important? Well, you guys can see this massive support right here. So right here, we had this massive support that took us all the way up to uh, 180. So that was a bounce right off there. We saw a hard reject right here. So right there, you know, we could see this hard reject and then, you know, we made it back above and then we made it back below. So now we're kind of chopping around this uh, resistance area. So right now we're below it because we're at 148.11. Now take a look at the support area. So this support area is right around 138. So we had um, pretty serious resistance all the way back here. So this was um, basically, let's see, what day was this? This was in um, September of 2020. So this basically happened right around that um, stock split in 2020. So we had that stock split, massive rally, and then huge, huge, um, pretty much correction. So yeah, we had this huge correction there. And then you guys can see price action, you know, we had this fake out and then it crushed right back below. And then once we got above that, you know, we had this massive, massive rally that took us to all time highs. But you guys can see that we actually went back and we hit this prior resistance now becoming support. So um, we hit that support right there. Uh, we actually went underneath it for a little bit right around here. This was a uh, right back in uh, May of 2022. So May of 2022, you know, we went below that. We chopped around a little bit and then we saw this massive, massive rally that I just talked about. So right here, this little green area, this is a demand zone. So this is where people are buying. So essentially this demand zone is right around, uh, let's see, it's right around uh, 127.45 um, and up to 137.68. Uh, so that's the demand zone right here. Now you guys can also see that there is this massive supply zone right here. Every single time we make it up here, you guys can see that we start selling off, especially in most recent price action. So uh, this supply zone is um, basically right around 159.12 to 150.69. So that's pretty much what's going on right there. So when we do get in this area, you gotta be a little bit cautious because this is where a lot of selling happens. So, um, you know, let's just talk about the moving averages a little bit and I'm going to zoom in to the more recent price action. So where I'm going to zoom in is pretty much just going to be right from this previous top that we had. All right. 
So uh, let's just talk about these moving averages. So the 200 day moving average, this is at 154.60. So we are below that because we're at 148.11. Now let's look at the 50 day moving average. This is at 146.53. So we're above that. So right now we're in the clear because we're at 148.11. But um, here's the worrisome thing. You guys can see this pennant pattern. So right here we have this first um, topping out and then we have this rejection right here. We have another rejection right here, another rejection right there, another rejection right there. So in the more recent price action, we had uh, three rejections here, here, and here. So um, to me, this just leads to, uh, I would just say that it's kind of bearish, you know. Now, don't take this as financial advice. You know, I could be completely wrong, but just based off this price action that I'm seeing right here, you know, three rejections off this trend line. I'm thinking that, you know, it's more likely that we could see a little bit of downside. So, um, like I said, we are in this pennant pattern. So if we do go underneath this 50 day moving average, we could see some accelerated selling. So that is the worrisome thing. And if we do cut below this bottom trend line, we could entirely fill this gap right here. So uh, let's just talk about this gap right here. So I'm going to zoom in to a lower time frame. So we're going to look at the 30 day, 30 minute time frame. So you guys can see this gap a little bit better. So right here, we created this uh, massive, massive gap. This was right around November 9th. So um, you guys can see this is crazy. So the bottom of this gap is right around 135 ish. The top of this gap is right around 140 50. So this was essentially like a $5 gap right here. So if we do make it below this um, support line right here, it's entirely possible that we could go and fill this gap. And the big question here is when we go and fill this gap, are we going to make a triple bottom or are we going to cut down lower? So you guys can see right here, we basically double bottomed and we had this massive rally. So are we going to triple bottom or are we going to cut down below? And do keep in mind that if we are below this trend line and we go for this gap fill, we will be underneath the 50 day, we will be underneath the 200 day. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and have a good one.